In today's episode of The Path Monk Presents, I have uh, Mika Mekitalo here from Happy or Not, and he is nonetheless uh, no less than the CEO of the company. Um, and uh, we're very curious to learn what the product is all about, who's actually using it. Um, what I can tell uh, for sure is already definitely helps you folks to really get a grasp on how people are you know satisfied or how, how much and how, <clears throat> how satisfied they actually are with your product. So uh, Mika, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Super happy to be here. Very good. Um, so then maybe give us your 360 overview. What is uh, Happy or Not all about? Yeah, so our mission is that we are empowering organizations to materially improve their operations by unlocking insights from customer feedback. Yeah. We are known for our four smileys where you know, consumers can easily give feedback and that feedback is so valuable for our customers because they can not only see how their customers are feeling, but also indeed buy that data to improve how they operate, i.e., uh, you know, improve their revenue and, uh, and their margins. And mm -hmm. of course, we have t terminals, but obviously, you know, in, in today's uh, digital world, of course, we have digital offering there as well and uh, these kind of touch, touch screens to have more questions to have more insights for, for our customers and, and can you tell us a little bit sort of in which context the tool is, is being used is that you know within products is that on websites is that in email surveys you know how do people use happy or not yeah so, so our, you know our uh, business started with with a physical terminal Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you are visiting, say, Heathrow or, you know, restaurants or uh, retail stores, you know, when, when you, you know, leave the store, you know, there are those four smileys and you can say how, you know, how you felt. And yeah. there might be some follow-up questions that, hey, why you were dissatisfied or why you were happy. But, uh, but over the years, we've indeed added, added uh, offering also to, you know, make sure it works well with, the, you know, mobile apps or on a website and so forth. So the, indeed customers can see this kind of om omni-channel approach, you know, feedback from all, all different sources. Now that you're saying this, I'm kind of sure that I've seen your terminal on the Dublin airport. I'm not exactly sure, but definitely you've been punching into those yes. places a couple of yeah, times. Yeah. Yeah. Very good, cool. Okay, so um, that's what you guys are doing. Makes a whole lot of sense. Like now tell us a little bit about who's actually using it. Like what are the typical companies that, you know, um, you know leverage uh, the tool? Oh, I'd say that they are, of course, and what, what we've been doing earlier is that we have customers across the board, small businesses, enterprise customers from all, all verticals. So, so, you know, in today's world, you know, the power is with the customer or the consumer. And, and it would be so important for all businesses to understand what their customers are feeling, what they think, you know, what was working, what was not working, to make sure that they are in, able to improve the whole customer journey to make sure that they are serving their customers well. And, and uh, often the problem is that customers don't know, uh, or, or, or say companies don't know what their customers think, or it's some random feedback emails or you know physical papers, paper feedback, but it's not statically meaningful data. And therefore it's very difficult to draw conclusions. So therefore, uh, it, it's almost like a start for customer improvement or making sure that really uh, understanding, you know, what, what the customers are, are thinking. Gotcha. Is that typically a customer service lead that is bringing out? Is that a marketing lead reaching out to you guys? It's like uh, they are both. It, there might, might be some, some, you know, the marketing side thinking that, hey, it would be good to say that we, we have happy customers. So, hey, how will measure that? Mm -hmm. But I, I think uh, maturity is, you know, operations want to improve. So, so, so first of all, want to understand that where we are, you know, versus competition, where we are with other locations, uh, and 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 then then thinking that if we knew that, how we could improve. Uh, we 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 have, uh, you know, normally customers have multiple locations, and then it's easy to measure and think about that how well, you know, all lake locations. Are delivering against the brand value that the company has, this kind of quality assurance, and 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 often the case is that they are, you know, a couple of locations, you know, beating the others, and there might be, of course, some, 
you know, in, in, the, in, in the bottom. And the question is that, you know, if the offering is the same, if the onboarding process for the employee is the same, you know, why is that? Uh, you know, you know, that is indeed, un, you know, through unlocking that feedback insight that they are able to improve. And, you know, this is something we've seen, especially in retail, for example, uh, typically our customers are able to reduce the amount of unhappy customers in the first 12 months by 20%. And, you know, the impact on that on, on business is massive. Yeah, I've seen uh, myself, I've been in, you know, large companies, Google, Workday, and I see how long an actual customer story can make it within a company because so many people are detached, right, from what yeah. people are actually experiencing. So super, yeah. super interesting that you give them that uh, channel there. So, okay, um, let's talk a little bit about, about digital growth, right? So you as a, a CEO, how do you sort of look at this? You know, how do people get to get to know Happy or Not? What are sort of the channels that you guys are leveraging? Or, uh, yeah, maybe let's put it like this. What are the sort of the top client acquisition channels that you guys are leveraging? Uh, yeah, for, for us, it's it's quite positive that, you know, uh, our, our terminals and our service is out there. So, so there's a lot of visitors, you know, how, like, you, like you mentioned, you know, Dublin Airport, Heathrow, you know, restaurants, you know, uh, retail chains, you know, they, they've seen us and they, they understand for, for when giving feedback is easy and convenient, happens in a moment, they, they realize that this could work for us. And also this means that we have a lot of website visitors, you know, looking for information and, and converting and, you know, uh, becoming customers. So we are not, you know, hunting customers through massive outbound campaigns mm -hmm. or efforts. So for us, uh, making sure that the, the visitors on our website do get the information they came to see and, uh, you know, would become our customers. That, 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 that is the primary way. It's quite outstanding, actually, for sort of a tech product company to have, you know, that experience from the outside world, bringing people back to the website. That's pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty cool. Um, your personal, I know, obviously, you're, you know, in the CEO seat and you're having, you know, many other things to focus. I'm just curious, though, on your perspective on the website, you know, what do you personally think is the sort of the major strength and maybe where you personally see room for improvement for the page? Well, I, I think websites should be never like, like ready. It should be always improving, improving, and especially in today's world, SaaS companies, I think the, the, the best growth SaaS companies have this kind of growth hacking, you know, mm -hmm. operations where, 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 you know, all departments are constantly running experiments, thinking how we could grow even faster, how we could have, you know, better conversion rates on, on a, any, any point, how our product could be, you know, serving serving customers better or you know uh, unlocking some growth potential so so uh, obviously marketing and website is maybe one of the most important topics for growth hacking thinking that hey yeah, is it is it working the, the 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 best 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 possible way and like like always websites have certain life lifespan you know when when they when they are fresh you know it's it's it works perfectly but you know adding adding new sites landing pages all the time and you know technology goes old you know it, it should be renewed totally you know three to five years mm -hmm. and also currently we are we are uh, soon launching our new new uh, version of our, our website that also you know serves better that kind of growth hacking and we are able to run tests to make sure that we we have a, a site that is we're you know serving the visitors also from data points uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, data point as good as possible and how do you maybe if you allow me a follow-up question how do you think about growth hacking do you sort of form like a small you know task force to do this you know how how do you try to implement that within the company yeah i think it's it, ideally it's that all employees are there and and they can be running tests there's separate uh, growth hacking budget so they don't have to ask permission to run run, run experiments mm -hmm. but I, I think what, what's important there it's not like just any experiments you know do i like milk or uh, milk or cream in, in my coffee mm -hmm. but but it's, it's 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 a formal setup that hey this is the this is the hypothesis we want to test this is the test setting, how we'll do it. It can be A-B test or, you know, something. Then we have data telling what happened and we, we do the proper analysis afterwards. So, so then I think that we can have the, you know, uh, wins and failures and, and celebrate both. Celebrate both. And, uh, but I, I think it would be best that it's, uh, 
born uh, in the company. It's in the culture that, hey, this is something we, we want to do. And also what's important that we reserve time for, say, any kind of development or studying or assessing, analyzing and, and growth hacking. Yeah. Hacking. So if folks are just super busy with the task lists, of course, you know, adding growth hacking there just won't work. <laughs> Very good. And actually, that's a common theme that is coming up in the interviews recently. Like you have to put aside that task. You have people to allow to have that time to do that reflection yeah. and get to the, that result. Very interesting. Um, completely different question, though. Uh, um, how do you, as a CEO, think about customer acquisition costs in your very particular setup? Like, I'm, I'm always curious to understand how people think about it. Now that you have, you know, tools sitting in airports and the likes, like, how do you think about customer acquisition costs? Yeah, it's a, you know I'm very data data driven and 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 of course like any growth company SaaS growth company should be you know measuring everything. So I, I think CAC, following CAC ratios or how much we are spending in sales and marketing versus versus a new Euro ARR we are generating. So so making sure that we are at a healthy level. Mm -hmm. You know, also checking uh, verticals or checking re, uh, geos that how well we are doing and adding gas only when it makes sense. So, so I, I think it's vital for companies to really monitor how, how they are doing. And also when we add, add a lifetime value to the mix, we, we can see that, hey, not only short term, but, you know, longer term, how those uh, customers are uh, generating for the, for the company. So I think this is almost like a, a SaaS growth company 101 to make sure that what are the key KPIs uh, to measure, uh, to follow, to think what are the thresholds we, we start adding, mm -hmm. you know, new, new, new uh, ammo for marketing and sales, sales, and then, you know, uh, what, what are the uh, marks we set for, say, new, new sales staff onboarding that uh, we can see, see that, hey, this was successful and we can add you know, uh, new sales force. I, I think too often companies, you know, follow the KPIs, but don't act on those. And then, then wonder what, what, why, why the growth was, was so expensive and why, you know, going, going to new, new markets wasn't as efficient as operating in the old, old markets. I mean, since you're very data driven, I want to maybe throw in one more one more metric into the room and see, you know, how you think about it. In relation to customer acquisition goes, how do you think about conversion rates on the website? Uh, super, super important, and especially like I mentioned, uh, it's uh, one of our key targets uh, there. So, so, so I, I think it's so important that uh, the whole marketing thinks and and the company thinks that hey, first, how how, how we can att attract more visitors to our websites. And then, of course, all uh, all uh, employees, partners, even customers are evangelists. So, how we can get you know uh, uh, folks uh, praising and, and touting the message, so we can get as many uh, visitors to our website, and then, of course, converting those those to uh, marketing quali uh, qualified leads, sales qualified leads, and of course, the the more visitors, the better conversion rates. You know, the more we sell, the more we grow. Uh, so therefore, uh, for, for any company, the growth starts there. So, so, so uh, following those uh, uh, conversion, con conversion rates is almost like predicting growth. Yeah. Unless we see uh, things we've, uh, we've planned, calculated, you know, we won't never hit our targets. So almost like uh, uh, to, to be a growth company, it's almost calculating back, backwards that how much sales stuff for generating that growth, how much sales we have to do, how much pipeline we need to do, how much leads we need to do, you know, what, what the conversion rate should be. And, and, and then, then optimizing, optimizing those all the time. It's very interesting. I mean, you say it in a way as it would be clear to everybody, but I'm surprised very often on the show, it's not crystal clear conversion yeah. rate and customer acquisition goes how they all relate to each other. So very, yeah. uh, thanks a lot for sort of that very, very clear outline. Um, let's switch gears a little bit, right? I want to talk a little bit about you as a leader as well in the company. So um, typically uh, the uh, SaaS CEOs that we are seeing, you know, they're busy with tons of different stuff. So I'm curious, how do you find the time? If we come back to the topic, how do we find, how do you find the time to educate yourself and reflect mm -hmm. and, you know, develop yourself further? Um, you know, where do you go and, and how do you filter information uh, so that you, you know, can educate yourself? 
Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. And uh, yeah, definitely, like, like you said, of course, uh, you know, I'm only one employee that needs to learn like the others. So of course, like, like any other employee, you know, wanting to make sure that they are running the latest waves, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm reading, reading, you know, SaaS books, uh, uh, all, all about subscription economy, uh, growth hacking, leadership organizations, uh, blogs, uh, podcasts, and especially, you know, I'm a heavy, heavy, a passionate runner. And that, of course, gives me time listening post podcasts while running. So I think these are these are the ways where you can, you know, learn new things. And of course, then it's so so important also that the, the, the organization and the colleagues are similar, you know, future and growth oriented. So so then you can talk and uh, brainstorm around the concepts what one was reading and hey did you see that blog and hey what the impact could be on us and should we test that hypothesis there you know on our website and hey let's let's run a growth hacking experiment on that so i, I think uh, that is so important that, that that all the fresh ideas are implemented or thought through but you know the case is that of course companies running with 10 year old information you know, won't win it. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. Since we're slowly coming to the end of the interview, I would love to, you know, throw some rapid fire questions at you. Are you ready for those? Uh, I'm ready. What's the last book that you read? Uh, it, 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 was a, it was a novel, you know, I'm, I'm part of vacation, so it was a novel by Mika Valtteri. Mm -hmm. What's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? We are focused on, uh, on improving our retention. Mm -hmm. If there would be no boundaries in technology, what's the one thing that you want to fix for your role today? For my role, uh, perfect dashboards. <laughs> that fits. I think that fits in the topic of the interview. Very good. <laughs> what is the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? Uh, I was thinking retention, customer sets, uh, how we'll make sure that we are unlocking, you know, the, the capabilities for the customers while they are using the product. So this, I, I was uh, having a dream about this topic. Obviously, I was thinking about that, you know, going, going to bed, but uh, that, that is something also cooking in our roadmap. Mm -hmm. So if we would be, you know, zooming uh, back um, sort of a couple of years, you know, Uh, into your career. I know you've been, you know, have led very interesting different experiences. And I think if I'm not mistaken, you come out of the uh, Tampa University of Technology. Uh, at least you've been very involved uh, there. Um, let's get back to your study days, right? So you just completed your university. What's the one advice that you would give yourself for your career path? I would say, you know, to, to young version of myself or any, anyone out there that, you know, dream big, they are no There are no barriers. There are no class ceilings. You can do it. Dream big and do it. Just do it. I think I really appreciate uh, that, uh, you know, gave us that sort of very inspirational finish to the interview. I want to wrap it up by giving you the very last word, right? So if somebody would be forgetting uh, all that we discussed about happy or not today, what's the one thing that they should remember about the company? Uh, uh, it's outstanding way uh, providing, giving a customers in insights of their customers' feedback. So improving your operations by what customers think, you know, improving your revenue and margins. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Pathong Presents. My pleasure being here. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs>